Welcome to the BewareCast, where I teach you about the things that you need to beware of. You may have seen in the recent Predator Badlands trailer a skull in the Predator's trophy room that starkly resembles that of something we may have seen before. I'm talking, of course, about the Harvesters from the 1996 blockbuster Independence Day. In this film, humanity faces an overwhelming extraterrestrial threat. These aliens are depicted as ruthless conquerors, travelling from world to world stripping planets of their resources before moving on. But beyond their role as antagonists, their physiology, technology and behaviour invite some fascinating speculation about their biology and possible evolutionary path. In this video, we're going to break down everything we know and everything we can infer about these horrifying invaders. The aliens, the harvesters, themselves are striking, large, around 7 to 10 feet tall with elongated limbs and a frail looking inner body encased in a biomechanical exosuit. The true harvester creature is small and weak by comparison, suggesting they evolved in a low gravity environment where physical strength was less critical. Their skin is slick and almost amphibian in texture, hinting at an aquatic or semi-aquatic ancestry. Their massive black eyes indicate they might come from a world with low light levels or a distant star, as such eyes would be well suited to seeing in the dark. The biomechanical suits they wear serve both as protection and enhancement, boosting their strength, shielding them from injury, and even acting as life support systems in foreign atmospheres. This suggests that while they are biologically fragile, their technology compensates for these weaknesses, allowing them to operate in harsh environments like Earth's. It's worth noting that their physiology is remarkably different from typical grey alien depictions, perhaps hinting at a very old species that has diversified over eons, adapting through both evolution and cybernetics. These creatures are highly intelligent, but demonstrate a hive mind structure where a queen or central intelligence appears to direct the actions of the broader swarm. This is supported by their coordinated, almost insect-like military tactics and the clear presence of a ruling class. In Independence Day Resurgence, this hierarchy is even more explicit, with the Queen being massive in size and directly connected to her troops. Their motives are cold and resource-driven. They don't seek communication, alliance or cultural exchange. Their behaviour is akin to cosmic locusts, moving from planet to planet, consuming all natural resources and leaving nothing behind. This level of single-mindedness suggests their society is structured entirely around survival and expansion. Their disregard for other life forms hints at a species that sees everything else as either prey or an obstacle, rather than equals. This might point to evolutionary pressures on their homeworld that forced them into a hyper-competitive expansionist mindset. The Harvester's technology is some of the most advanced ever depicted in science fiction cinema. Their mothership is 500 kilometres in diameter, larger than many small moons, and capable of housing entire fleets. Their city-sized attack ships generate massive shields that render conventional human weapons useless until they are disabled through clever tactics. Their energy weapons channel immense destructive force, capable of levelling cities in a single blast. The alien fighters are agile and responsive, and their entire technological suite seems to be partially biomechanical, hinting at a fusion between living organisms and machines. This suggests they have long abandoned purely mechanical technology, instead choosing to evolve and grow their tools and weapons organically, a sign of an extremely advanced biotech civilization. Despite their overwhelming power, the Harvesters do have notable weaknesses. Their dependence on centralised control, like the Queen or Mothership, is a critical vulnerability. When the mothership is destroyed in the first film, the city-sized ships become inactive, implying a heavy reliance on coordination signals. Their biomechanical suits are powerful, but not invincible. Once the shields are bypassed, human weapons can harm them. 
and while their hive mind grants them unity, it also makes them predictable and perhaps unable to adapt quickly to novel tactics, such as the computer virus used to disable their defences in the original film. In Resurgence, the Queen's death leads to an immediate collapse of their forces' effectiveness, confirming that disrupting their command structure is key to defeating them. It's a classic example of cutting off the head to kill the body, and a reminder that even the mightiest invaders can be undone by exploiting their structural weaknesses. Let us now speculate at length on the homeworld of the Harvesters, a planet shaped by survival and conquest. Though Independence Day doesn't explicitly reveal the home planet of the Harvesters, we can speculate based on their physiology, technology, and behaviour. Everything about these aliens, from their biomechanical exosuits to the hive-like societal structure, points to a world where survival is harsh, competition is fierce, and only the most ruthless thrive. Their planet is likely vast and barren, perhaps orbiting a dim star that provides only minimal warmth and light. This could explain their reliance on harvesting other worlds, not just for resources, but possibly even for sustenance, as their home may be depleted or inhospitable. A thin atmosphere or even a near-vacuum environment could be normal for them, which fits with their protective suits and the fact that they seem unaffected by the conditions inside Earth's ships or in space. The ecology of their world would be dominated by hard-shelled, durable life forms. Evolution on this planet likely favoured creatures with natural armour and the ability to survive extreme environments, much like the exoskeletons the harvesters use. The vast, arid plains of their planet could be home to towering insectoid megafauna, while subterranean networks serve as hives or cities where the harvesters organise their collective efforts. It's possible that, early in their evolution, they were prey creatures, which led to their highly cooperative, hive-minded social structure and eventual dominance as apex predators. The very cultures of the Harvesters suggests a nomadic, parasitic existence. They move from world to world, depleting each one before moving on. This could be not just a strategy, but a necessity born from the scarcity of their own homeworld. Their queen, as seen in Independence Day Resurgence, hints at a centralised hierarchy that might mirror the structure of their planet a queen ruling over countless subservient drones, all operating toward the singular goal of survival and expansion. If humanity ever reached their homeworld, we might find a place that is both awe-inspiring and terrifying, a testament to a civilization that has mastered interstellar travel, but at the cost of everything else. A world where the environment itself is hostile, where life has been engineered for war and survival, and where entire continents might serve as factories and hives, rather than natural landscapes. The aliens from Independence Day are more than just generic invaders. Their complex biology, hive-based society, and fusion of organic and mechanical technologies make them a rich subject for speculation. While they may appear unstoppable at first glance, their very strengths contain hidden flaws that humanity can, and does, exploit. Whether they evolved naturally into this role, or were shaped by their long history of conquest, they remain one of cinema's most iconic extraterrestrial threats.